Can I on Zoom? I shiver me timbers. Everyone wears mittens. The object of the game is to unwrap the gum the fastest. No matter what. <laughs> I've always really enjoyed storms. Whether it's raining and windy, or snowing and blowing. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my gosh! Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Yay! because we have Halloween in it and we get to dress up as anything we want. My favorite month is May because it's my birthday and you can start wearing summer clothes. Our favorite month is November because we're twins and it's our birthday. My favorite month is December because everybody's um, getting ready for Hanukkah and Christmas and, and everybody's singing and just showing up and it just brings a warm feeling to your heart. Why do the pirate want to play basketball? I don't know. 
because he wanted to practice his hook shot. <laughs> Are you looking for a treat for breakfast? Lee Sinman's snail sent to us by Kindle S of Marietta, Georgia might be just what you're looking for. Don't they look like snails? See, the little swirls look like the shells. Serve them with scrambled eggs and some orange juice and you've got yourself a great meal. Here's what you need to make three of them. A slice of bread with its crust removed. Cream cheese. Leave it out of the refrigerator for a little while so that it gets soft. Melted butter and some sugar mixed with a little bit of cinnamon. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. You can use a regular oven or a toaster oven. And if you're not allowed to use an oven, make sure you ask an adult to help you. Now, flatten out the bread by rolling over it with a rolling pin. Oh. I would hold the bread down too, so the bread doesn't come off the tray. There. That's good. Now spread a thin layer of cream cheese over the flattened bread. Just like that. That's enough. Okay. Now roll up the bread just like this. So it looks like this. Like a regular roll. Slice the roll into three pieces. Dip the pieces in the melted butter and the cinnamon and sugar, and then put them on the cookie tray. There. Looks really, really good right now. I love cinnamon and sugar mixed together. It's really good. Okay. Just like that. Now, Put the snails in the oven for 8 to 10 minutes or until they become crisp and brown. Okay. Here we go. This is what the snails look like when they're finished. Okay, I gotta try one of these. Bon appetit. Mm, this is really good. If you're cooking up a storm, we need to be informed. When you're stirring up a stew, you've you got to tell us what to do. do. do, do. Show us how you chop it, dice it, any way you slice it. If you want to see it on your TV, here's a simple recipe. You've got to send us three minutes. Send it to dinner. I'm 14 years old, and I'm from Waltham, Massachusetts, and I love the weather. Whether it's raining and windy, whoa! Or snowing and blowing. I've always really enjoyed storms, lightning, hurricanes, and blizzards. When I was little, my parents used to encourage me to look at the clouds and see if I could find any animal shapes. Then one of my science teachers was giving us a lecture on the weather, and I realized that someday I'd like to become a meteorologist. I volunteer at a local weather observatory where I get to work with real meteorologists. So it's getting a little more windy as the day goes on. A meteorologist is someone who predicts the weather. We use different instruments to collect our weather data. These instruments all measure the wind. These are barometers. They're used to measure the air pressure. You can use a barometer to predict the weather. Later, I'll show you how to make your own barometer so that you can predict the weather at home. Air pressure is the amount of force air pushes on things. When there's higher pressure, it will probably be sunny. When there's lower pressure, it'll probably be raining. The weather patterns are always changing. Oftentimes, you'll never see the same weather pattern occur twice. Sometimes, I just like to sit back 
and watch it change. Some game for you. Here's what you do. Everyone wears mittens. The object of the game is to unwrap the gum the fastest. I love this game and I'm sure you will too. Enjoy. Sincerely, Hannah S. of Westford, Massachusetts. If you want to play this at home and don't have any mittens, then you can also use socks. Everyone has a piece of gum. The first person to unwrap their gum, and I'm going to add blow a bubble, is the winner. Okay, are you ready to play? Yes. Yep. Nope. All right. On your mark. Get set. Go. Whoa. Okay. This is really hard. Okay, the mark. I'm wow. wrapping very quickly. Well, it's hard. Hard. It's hard. Oh, I'm starting. Oh, starting to oh. Eric has his edge. And oh, he has the gum out. And he's oh, chewing no. it in his mouth. And the gum is sticking to Rachel's mitten. <laughs> <laughs> but she almost. Oh, I almost got it open. And Eric's mm. chewing. Buzz is almost there. <laughs> Oh, Eric. oh, Eric's trying to blow his bow, oh, and it so hard. buzzes. Trying to put oh, the gum man, in his mouth. This is hard. He almost has it in his mouth. Rachel's still trying to unwrap the gum. Oh, oh Eric almost has a bubble. Oh, oh, a little bubble. And Buzz is coming up. Buzz, Buzz is too hard to play. Buzz might do it. Oh, you guys. Eric and Buzz are both blowing their bubbles. Oh, Buzz! Good job, Buzz! Nice. Good job! Oh, okay, do you want to see who comes in second? Yeah. Okay, so Eric and Rachel are still chewing. Oh, oh. Eric, Eric almost has yeah. it. And Rachel's blowing. She almost, ha she almost has it. <laughs> they didn't chew it a little. Oh, Eric almost got the bubble. And, oh, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel kind of got one. You're almost there. Both of you, you're doing really well. Come on, Eric. Go, Rachel. Keep chewing. Oh, 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 oh. Good, Good job, guys. Oh. Good job. Good job. Wait, wait, I gotta do it. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Come on, Rachel. Go, Rachel. Oh. Woo! Yeah! Good nice job, job, Rachel. Good job, Eric. High five! Good job, Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> Good job, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. told you about barometers, instruments that meteorologists use to predict the weather. Want to learn how to make your own barometer? All you need is tape, scissors, a balloon, an elastic band, a corner of a piece of poster board, a spaghetti sauce straw, two straws, a ruler, and a 6 centimeter by 30 centimeter piece of paper. First, you have to take the balloon and cut it right as it starts to get wide, then you take Take it and you stretch it over the top of the sweetie sauce jar and you wrap the elastic band around. Then you cut the straws and tape them together. Then you take another piece of tape and you tape the two straws right about in the middle so you make a cross. Tape the triangle onto the end. Take your strip of paper and draw lines that are one centimeter apart. Then write down the numbers between 29 and 31 in increments of one tenth so that it reads 29.10, 29.20, 29.30, etc. Then you take the piece of paper and you tape it to a wall and you put the barometer so that it points right about at the 30, which is today's barometric pressure. When there's higher pressure in the atmosphere, more pressure is being put on the balloon, causing the straw to rise to a higher number. When there's less pressure in the atmosphere, there's less pressure being put on the balloon, causing the balloon to rise and the pointer should go down to a lower number. Watch the pressure changes and record it on a chart 
and make sure you measure at the same time every day. You put the date, what it says the pressure is, and then you write the actual weather. This barometer will not exactly match the measurements of a mercurial barometer, but it will tell you whether the air pressure is rising or falling. So instructions on how to make your own homemade barometer, check out the Zoom website. How much does a pirate pay for earrings? I don't know. How much? A buck an ear. Get it? A buck an ear? Mm. Oh, I should have gotten yourself a pet squirrel. <laughs> Down the Ant Hole, a poem by Brittany F. of Countryside, Illinois. What do you think is under the ground? Where the ants all go, with food they found. Do they have a tiny set of stairs that heads to a room with tables and chairs? And do they remember to wipe their feet before they sit down to the table to eat? Zoom, Jack. Zoom. Check. Zoom, Jack. Here's a letter from Montreal, Quebec, that we're going to use to start off our Zoom chat today. Montreal, Canada. Dear Zoom, my name is Stephanie. I'm half Spanish and Canadian, and half French from France. I think that for a Zoom chat, you guys should talk about your cultures and how they affect you. Thanks for listening. Well, what do you guys think a culture is before this time? I think it's like where you come from, the kind of food you eat, that's your culture. Yeah, I think that it's also like your background and like your manners and what you do and your religion. And it's like a la your language could be part of your culture because that's what, like, yeah. where you live. Yeah, it's how it's how you speak, right. So, where are you guys off like from and everything? I'm Irish and my whole family, my grandmother is... Are you 100%? Um, well, yes, both sides come from Ireland. Yeah. And you weren't born in Ireland. Right, I wasn't born in Ireland, but I'm all Irish. I'm not half anything. Yeah. yeah. I'm 50% Portuguese. Like, my dad's Portuguese, and my mom's like a mix of a bunch of different things, but on, like, holidays and things, when we go to my grandma's house, we have, like, different kinds of food and stuff like that. We have, like, soup, and my uncle makes, like, Portuguese bread, and it's a lot of fun. It's really cool how, like, different foods can come from different places. Yeah. I'm um, about 100% Haitian. Haitian? Haitian. 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 And I was just thinking about it because my dad's Haitian and my mom's Haitian. So that's why I know. And um, for, for dinner and stuff, sometimes we eat American food and sometimes we eat Haitian food. What's, like, what's Haitian food like? Haitian food's really good. Um, it's spicy, some of it. And there's one of my favorite Haitian food is this leaf that you cook and you eat it with the rice and stuff. It's called lalo. Lalo? It's, yeah, it's That's really good. That's cool. I just love my, I love my culture. It's lots of fun. If you go to Haiti right now, every night there's a carnival. That's cool. That is awesome. Oh, I'm going to They speak Creole, oh. which is our language. And can you speak Creole? Yes. Say something. Um. <laughs> What's that mean? How are you doing? <laughs> oh, cool. Um, yeah, it's also fun to learn, but it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to remember everything. How about you? Yeah, kind of. Well, my background, my ethnic background, which is part of my culture, is I'm a lot of things. I'm Hawaiian, uh, I'm Filipino, I'm English, and I'm wow. like 50% Italian. Wow. Yeah. Mostly on Fridays, we go over my great grandmother's house and have dinner all the time. Like, we have minestrone, then mm -hmm. they make like salad and spaghetti and stuff like that and fish it's it's really not much different from what you usually do every day the food is usually the most different thing mm -hmm. well, Eric, what about you what's your well, background or my culture, my culture. <laughs> well I, I guess i have to say about 50 i'm about 50 percent irish oh, wow. because, really? yeah because my my great-grandmother she came from ireland What's your dad? Yeah, about 50 percent African. <laughs> cool. So yeah, my dad was African, so African American. Have you ever been to Africa or no. Ireland? Ireland? 
Wow. I want to visit but those places. It's yeah. really cool, though, to see, like, everybody is, like, the same. Yeah. But different. But different, <laughs> right. Everybody's the same, but different. Like, we're all friends, but we're, we're also different. We're different. We come from different places and different, we have different backgrounds. Amelia S. of Ambler, Pennsylvania, participated in a program called Locks of Love. Locks of Love gives wigs to kids who have lost their hair because they were sick. Amelia cut her very long hair and donated it so that it could be made into wigs for kids. She donated 11 inches of her hair. That's great, Amelia. You and your friends can become members of the Zoom team together. Here's how. Get a group of friends and plan a project, like a car wash to benefit a charity, or a clothing drive for a homeless shelter. Be sure to tell us all about it at the Zoom website, where you can also find out what other kids are doing. Zoom into action. Zoom into action. And join the Zoom team! <laughs> Ever played with this before? Well, Christopher P. of Wall, New Jersey, calls it cornstarch feelies. You might call it ooglick, but on Zoom, we call it blind. You can form it into what seems like a solid ball. But when you let go, this line oozes out like a liquid. Cool. <laughs> to make slime, all you need is some cornstarch and some water. You can figure out the amounts of ingredients you'll need to make it. I'm going to use a pound of cornstarch and a half, one and a half cups of water. Okay, just take your cornstarch and dump it right into the bowl. Okay. Now I'm going to take some, ooh, some water and just put it right in. And then just mix it up in the bowl. I don't think this spoon is going to work too well on this, so I'm just going to use my hands. Whew, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> If it's really thick, you can add some extra water because your mixture should be um, slightly runny. This is. I think we need a, just a tiny bit more water. Sure. Just a little bit, like little drops. Put a little one. Here's your one. We need to put it in. Just a little bit. So like. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Here's what's cool about the lime. When you give this lime a fast poke, putting pressure on it, the slime particles lock together, and it acts like a solid. Wow, cool. Look at that. No matter how hard I stop moving. But when you poke it slowly, this doesn't happen, and the slime acts like a liquid. That is so cool. Oh. Wow, that is so neat. Six. Ew. Yeah. This doesn't happen with other liquids. If you poke your finger in water really fast, it splashes like this. Yeah, splashes. <laughs> if you jumped into a large bucket of water, it would splash like this. Hold on, I'm going to stand you so it's supported so you don't fall. Okay, ready? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was a splash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you jump in a big bucket of slime, it doesn't splash. You probably won't be able to do this because you need a lot of cornstarch. Okay, ready? Ready, watch. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. Oh my gosh! It felt like I they landed on a floor. I... <laughs> okay. Let's go! Here's the jump again in slow motion. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Whoa! Be careful. Ready? No, no, stop. And see if you sink. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so cool. <laughs> you really need to feel this line run through your fingers to understand how it changes. So, get some cornstarch in water and try it out. Then, find other liquids at home that act like slime and send your discoveries to Zoom. 
you do, you're going to love to play Tic-Tac-Toe Relay, sent in by Annika R. of Urbandale, Iowa. To play, you need a Tic-Tac-Toe board. We're using a pad of paper, but if you're outdoors, you can use chalk for the sidewalk. Pull your board at one end of the playing field and have two teams stand at the other end. One team is X's and the other is O's. Team members have to run to the board Pick up their marker, mark an X or an O, and run back. The first team with a tic-tac-toe is the winner. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Eric, Eric, come on. All right, ready? Yeah. On your mark, <laughs> get set, go! Want to make your next party zooming? To help you plan your celebration, go to Zoom Party at the Zoom website, pbskids.org, or America Online keyword, PBS Kids. become the property of Zoom and will be eligible for inclusion in all Zoom media. This means that we can share your ideas with other Zoomers on TV, the web, in print materials, and in other Zoom ways. So, send it to Zoom. If you have a Zoom side challenge, then send it to Zoom. Box 350, Boston, Mass, 02134. Or, you can send it to the Zoom website at pbskids.org and you'll receive the latest issue of Zoomerang. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm so scared. laughs> Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks! A production of WGBH Boston.